Hey everybody, Raven here. I just had the amazing opportunity of interviewing Audrey Whitby from Betch and also in The Vault, which is now streaming on Crackle TV. Season one is up right now and you better tune in because season two starts August 18th. Stay tuned, listen in, enjoy the interview. Hey, everybody. Um, I am here today with the amazing Audrey Whitby. Um, so we're just going to kind of sit down and, and chat and, and have some fun and talk about the ongoings of your career, life, whatever you want to talk about. This is going to be a fun time. Um, well, I love to talk. So as we've learned. Yes. Um, and thank you, by the way, again, just for being here. It's going to be so much fun. I'm so excited. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Seriously, I'm so excited to chat to you. Yeah. So um, we're basically here to, I mean, first chat about, you know, the, the anticipated season two of In the Vault. And uh, I first want to say before I, I came here, I had actually not heard of it season one. And uh, so I went on a crackle because Chris and them told me about it. And I was like, this is really damn good. Like I, I did not know what to expect. I was like, oh, maybe we'll get like a clue vibe or whatever, you know, murder mystery, who done it kind of thing. And I was like, twists and turns left and right. So uh, we're kind of a hidden gem right now. And I agree, you know, it's, you do have those typical teen drama, you know, who done it kind of things. But I think that what In the Vault does is so well is adding layers with these complex characters and their motives it kind of it, I think it does surprise people oh yeah because you'd go left and then all of a sudden it's like this major right and you're like what wait wait what wait wait you tricked me you tricked me because I thought it was going this way and then it goes that way <laughs> so and and the acting as well because you know sometimes when you go oh it's a college show you know it's gonna be uh, campy whatever it had campiness to it but it was the good campiness you know it's the aware it, you know I've always I mean my favorite movie is Scream and so I've always loved I mean, things that are a little bit tongue in cheek and a little self aware and I think that we pick the perfect moments to be kind of deprecating about the genre on a whole and, and you're right I've got some of the I mean all of the actors that we worked with are just so talented you have you know, Caleb Castile and Timothy Granaderos and all sorts of, you know, Jack Bernard, all sorts of really, really talented um, young actors who are all going on to do great things. Definitely, for sure. I, I see big things for everybody. Um, and it's just, but it is great. You know, the whole tongue in cheek thing, you're absolutely right. It just, it felt like I said, it had that little bit of, oh, ha ha, but then it also gave you it. it it's hard to explain because I watch a lot of TV, obviously, because, you know, if I do interviews, I kind of have to know what's going on. You know, you can't just walk in and be like, what? <laughs> TV is my favorite hobby. Um, yeah, it's a know. great hobby to have. Um, Why not? Yeah, so, you you know, there are some things out there and, you know, this is, it's, it's C, you know, not B rated. You're just like, see, you're like, what am I watching? But some of them are great too, you know? So it's like, but this, this was definitely a, I enjoyed season one so much. So thank you for that. Uh, ending. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and I totally got off track with what I was going to talk about, but, um, yeah, if you could just kind of give us, um, a brief synopsis, cause we kind of chatted about it, but then also, what does season two have in store for us without spoilers? Obviously you don't want to ruin it. I know. Cause I'm kind of wondering how much am I, am, am I supposed to give away what happens in season one here or should I no. try to that? Don't. Okay. No, don't just because I don't know. I want people like I'm telling all of my friends and followers, like you guys need to watch it. Cause it's fun. Right? Like yeah. you don't really know what's happening at the end. And so that's how I'm like, I'm putting you on blast because I'm like, how are you going to read, how are you going to do this without kind of giving it? <laughs> you will. No, I, I, I've got a good answer for this. And I love yeah. that, you know, and thank you so much for telling your friends. I mean, that's how we really felt like we are kind of this um, hidden gem for a while because we, we filmed the first season, gosh, six years ago. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that, uh, you know, fun, I, I always say that there are two things that read really well on camera and that is like tension and fun and I think it's obvious how much fun we were having as a cast as a crew um 
And so, yeah, I, uh, for people watching, it is uh, a good time. But season one surrounds um, the tragic death of a woodlawn freshman. And uh, each episode follows one of their surviving um, dorm mates, hall mates, if you will, um, and to kind of give their side of the story or their motive. So, you know, you're a protagonist one week, you're a suspect the next. Everybody's got um, reasons to be suspicious of each other. Um, it's full of secrets and like thrills. And I think it's also kind of a very pretty show. We got to film in Utah and it's gorgeous. So yeah, that's kind of what the show is about um, in a general sense. That that was good. That was good. <laughs> you left it very open. Nobody really knows what's happening. Um, I did have to say it was really beautiful. And that that campus looked familiar. I don't know, was that something where, do you know if anything had been filmed there? Because that that, general meeting room like with all the couches it looked very familiar to me unless if it was more reminiscent of something and it was just in my head but do you happen to know so that was actually a built set on okay. a Saturday. So we spent the first three weeks uh, a lot of our outside shots or our location shots were at this I'm blanking on the name uh, but this really um great college um in Salt Lake and then we went to, to Park City where they have these gorgeous stages and they built those sets. And I mean, I'm pretty sure it's like Hogwarts inspired. It's, we had closed ceilings, which is pretty cool for a set uh, for a season. And also our director, Charles uh, Hood and Ben Epstein were very um, specific and invested on the style of the show. And I think that that really comes through because it's just beautiful. Like some of, we have these one shots that are just gorgeous and yeah. Yeah, it was just, it was so beautiful. I was like, oh. I had a feeling it was somewhere around there because it just there's I've been there before like Salt Lake and and in the vicinity and it's just it's such a gorgeous place to be so even even if you know they they tore down the soundstage and y'all want to go visit I definitely recommend it it's super pretty. <laughs> the first season was in Utah the second season I guess this doesn't spoil too much we um filmed in Oregon so it's like near Portland oh. and so seriously it's like the two coolest places ever um, I you know that we got to film and they're all very moody, you know, uh -huh. I'm from the twilight generation. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't, you know, everywhere we were driving around, it's just like super massive black hole, Bella's lullaby, all that stuff. Yep. 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 I totally get it. I actually drove through forks once and got pulled over by a cop. So I <gasps> told everybody I got pulled over by Charlie. <laughs> This is when the books were out. The movie didn't even come out yet. So this is like, this is free. And everybody's like, what are you talking about? And then afterwards they're like, oh, I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> you were an OG. Oh yeah. I'm super OG. It's, uh, I don't know if I should say that or not, but yes, I am, you know, admit, admit the things it's fine. I love it. Um, so what can you actually tell us about season two? I mean, that's kind of tough. Cause, but yeah. We have, uh, oh my gosh. Well, I can say that we have some really interesting new students coming to Woodlawn. Um, Rachel Hilson joins the cast. She's just so talented and acting with her. I was like a masterclass. I just was like, I had to remember that I was in the scene too. Cause I would just be looking at her like, she's so good. Um, and you know, Aryan Mandy's there and, and she's incredible and on the L word and, um, and then we have Dominic Columbus, who's also doing incredible things. And so these people, you know, we have some very exciting new characters that come in and definitely stir things up and want to get to the bottom of things. Uh, it's this season is less about who done it and more about exploring um, who will find out. You know, there's a lot of suspense and tension around if. Um, people will be able to keep their secrets, which I think can be even more exciting in a lot of ways. And there's all sorts of typical college partying and um, yeah, it's, it's still good. Well, cause there's so many avenues that this can go down. You know what I mean? And again, so you're getting the twists and turns that you got from season one. It's just in a different context. So, yeah. and that makes it even more hectic, crazy, anxiety driven, you know, and that's all the things that you want from murder mysteries, you know, dramas, things like that. Reading the scripts, it was like, I, you know, I, I wasn't going to 
I was, I don't know what's going to happen next. And um, yeah, exactly. I think that it definitely keeps up that idea of everybody can have their own opinion and chat about what they think is going to happen next. And it's probably not what's actually going to happen because it is so out of left field most of the time. Um, (laughs) But yeah, it definitely keeps up that conversation going. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to it. And I'm sure a lot of other people are because that actually takes me to my next question. Um, When I was doing some research about the show, um, I had actually found some tweets, actually a lot of tweets where a lot of people were like, I can't find any place to watch this. And this is going in the past. Obviously, Crackle has picked this up, which thank God they did because- Thank you, Crackle. We love you, Crackle. I wouldn't have known. I Number one, wouldn't have known about it. Number two- wouldn't have known where to watch it if someone said, oh yeah, I had watched this like, you know, fun kind of show this one time. And I was like, well, where do I watch it? I don't know. But there were a lot of people that had tweeted. And I I think this actually went to like 2017, 28, no, 2018 were, you know, some of them. And uh, so all the way back then, still people talking about it where they're like, we just want to watch it. And so many people tuned in when it was first available. Um, so how does it feel to have all of these people wanting to watch it and see it and then also tune in and be so excited for this new season? I, I couldn't be more grateful for the viewers we have. I think we're like the, we are the most watched new show on Crackle, 3 million plus people watching and yeah, I'm just incredibly thankful for, that's a long time, that's dedication to, you know, remember um, our show and what we did and to want to keep up with it. Yeah, obviously the original platform we were on is uh, a no longer a thing, uh, <laughs> but that's okay. And what I'm really just most excited for is we put, you know, we, sometimes you're on a set and, you know, it, it's, it's a job and other times you're on a set and, you know, it's um, people's passion. And I think that that's what happened here everybody was just very dedicated and but on top of that you know having a good time at the same time you know uh so I'm just really excited that the audience gets to be a part of that and that everybody gets to see kind of the dedication of our crew and our cast and our writers and and Ben Epstein and Charles Hood and what they've really done and that's it's it's an incredible feeling it's really nice so how was it to because again there was such a long period of time in between freshman year and sophomore year (laughs) and none of you have aged a bit so it's not I mean that's not going to be an issue but how even just with the actors you know you guys in general how was it to go back after so much time has passed you know I always uh my answer to this question because I love this question is kind of tried and true but they really feel like my summer camp friends. So it's that exact same feeling you get when you go to school all year and you like can't even remember what happened at summer camp. You're like, what? Well, that feels like another life. But then you get back there and it's like you never left. And that's really what happened. I think that Aryan at the end of um, uh, at our season two wrap, she got us all of these necklaces that said summer camp forever. And that's truly how it feels you kind of like once you're there and you're surrounded by everybody you're like oh yeah I I remember this place I remember these people because I mean it was yeah it's been I think there was like three years in between the first and second season um but yeah it's very much so like my college experience in a lot of ways well again we're really looking forward to it and it, it, it really did seem with the way like the dynamics and everything you guys just seem to all work really well together you know because sometimes you can see if there's that disconnect you know yeah. between actors but I personally watching this could tell that there was definitely a connection with all of you almost like family you know it really did vibe location bonding or location location shooting is very bonding because you know you're all there you're staying in the same place it does feel like a dorm in a lot of ways and I think we're lucky enough with this cast is that you know I've been doing this long enough now and I've worked in the traditional space too and you know when you go somewhere to a set and it's it's a job for people right it's just it's their nine they're clocking in they're clocking out and they're ready to you know go home but I think what we got to do within the vault is you know just have a bunch of really 
like I said, passionate and dedicated people. And that shows, it really does when, you know, the investment in each other and into what we're doing um, and to wanting it to be good. You know, I think, talk about self-awareness. We were, we really wanted to be aware of what the show was and give it our best. And I'm just, I'm lucky to be, have been surrounded by people that had the same um, work ethic. That's awesome. It's always nice when you can work with like-minded people, all chill, all really get along together. It's just, that's, that's like the chef's kiss right there. Everybody wants that. Not a bag, not a bad eggs. No, all of us really just got along. Oh, that's great. Um, well, what's, what's next on your list of adventures? What have you got planned more writing more like what what's going on? Well, this is actually really exciting too. I just had um, Betch, which was the sketch yeah. show that I did um, a couple years ago. We did four seasons. Um, that was actually, Betch was originally on the same platform that In the Vault was, um, but then it went away. And so Betch has been trying to find a new home as well. And it finally did at um, Paramount Plus. Oh, so wow. People can go watch Betch on Paramount Plus right now. Um, it's like, I mean, that was the time of my life, you know, working with my sister and all of my best friend, Jessica Marie Garcia and Lauren Elizabeth. And I mean, and Monica Shearer is my, my sister's writing partner and she's basically my second sister as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, it was, I couldn't believe that I was getting paid to wear facial hair and be a <laughs> ridiculous idiot with my sister. Cause that's what we've been doing since we were little. And now the fact that somebody was actually letting it be our job was incredible. And we got to do, we were, uh, it's, it's like watching a home video. Yeah. Now that we're <laughs> Paramount where, you know, mom and dad, of course, are like, let's watch bed. And we're like, okay, fine. And then we turn it on and we're just enthralled because, you know, you forget all of the stuff that we did. Um, and they just kind of let us run wild, which shows, which that talk about what reads, uh, you know, five crazy girls who are just absolutely not unregulated and given no boundaries. That's what Betch is all about. And that's what we need. We <laughs> need just, we, no, I'm serious. Like we don't have a lot of just shows that are just goofy show that just inner child of yourself, good old time. Like my cousin and I used to do that. My grandmother had this big camcorder with the VHS tape in it, right? Like, and so we would just go and sit in places and do these stupid sketches, which some of them, we were kids, we didn't know, probably would not be great to show now just because accents and stuff, you know, we don't know. We're like seven, nobody knows that back then. And, um, but it was just fun. We would dress up, we would do all of these skits and things. And it's, it's great to know that there is something out there where all of these women get together and just have a great time. See, this is how I know we are kindred spirits because <laughs> uh, first of all, I'm sure I would love to see those. And um, maybe, I, I, maybe I'll, I'll send them to you. I'll send them to you, but that's it. Nobody else can see them. <laughs> it, it's truly the most elevated comedy. I think that that kind of, you know, obviously my sister, you know, it, we were doing very similar things with the flip cam and just <laughs> endlessly watching Mad TV and Mo Collins and Nicole uh -huh. Sullivan and SNL. And, you know, I think what I, I get really excited talking about Betch, obviously, because I think growing up, I was always just like felt very, um, you know, I was kind of the crazy, silly, weird, oh, doing cartwheels and an Irish and an Irish accent in the corner. Um, we're big in accents in my family too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think the leprechaun every um St. Patty's Day my dad loves the picture of me the full the lepre uh, leprechaun outfit of facial hair uh it's too good but um and so I think that you know and obviously we were lucky enough to live with a family who let us watch things like Mad TV and SNL which not every kid has that opportunity because some parents don't want to expose them that young but I think what was what we were excited to do with Betch was kind of for that unseen zany weird girl who really just doesn't have a filter or you know uh we wanted them to feel seen and make space for them too because we don't think that especially in like the teen space the teen 
television for teen girls is so hard and you know polished and there's just no room to be silly or ridiculous and so that's what we really wanted to do well I am personally looking forward to going back and 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 watching that that's gonna it's gonna be some fun it's gonna remind me of my childhood it's gonna be great (laughs) <laughs> so yeah, that's on Paramount Plus. And then we have, you know, season two drops August 18th. Uh, that's really exciting. And I'm just, yeah, I'm just so happy to be able to promote it and, you know, get the word out there because I want people to see this show. So I've been wanting people to see the show forever. And thank <clears throat> God Crackle is here and showing it to people because, and that it's free. You know, I love being able to promote something like Crackle where, you know, free across all devices, anybody, equal opportunity, consuming entertainment. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. No, you're absolutely right. Like I was going through and I saw stuff that we would watch on like Nick at night and stuff, my mom and I, and I was like, I didn't even know that still existed. Like that people had it. I thought it was locked up somewhere in a vault or something, you know, like Disney puts away things every 30 years or whatever. And I was like, this is great. So I, as well as you, uh, truly appreciate Crackle because they are bringing back a lot of stuff that I forgot about. So, um, well, you did the plug. That was going to be my last thing to tell you. Um, <laughs> no, it's totally fine. It's like you're reading my mind. We are so connected. Are <laughs> this has been too fun? It's a little weird, but I like it. I like weird. I am weird. So you know, it's 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 all fitting for this. And my my audience will totally be like, "Oh my god, girl, this is this is weird." And I'm like, "That's me." Um, Unite. Yeah. <laughs> well, again, I just want to thank you so much. I'm looking forward to season two and all of your next adventures. I just see great things for you. And also, of course, the cast. I, you know, it's just, again, I'm so glad I binged it before I came on here because I now am able to be like, truly, this show is amazing. And I'm so glad Crackle picked it up. August 18th, everybody tune in. Give Audrey a big woohoo, you know, like let's, let's tear it up, make it big, make it popular, get everybody on crackle. <laughs> Told you. It's morning coffee. This is me. <laughs> then I'll go take it. I'm back. already two in. So <laughs> that's where got the crazy smile. That's where that's coming in. Oh, you're way ahead of me. I still got to get another one in there. Wow. All right. Well, once again, thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. Um, if you guys ever do any like conventions for like crime or whatever, like any of that stuff, definitely let me know because I will be all over that. I will go to the conventions. I, that's all I do. So it's all of us being able to share your stories and your successes. That's, that's what we're here for. So I would love nothing more than to meet you in person. And I've been to Comic-Con a few times and that would, that just sounds like a blast. Um, yeah, I really, that would be great. Anytime. Yes. And just so you know, you may see me in a costume because 99% of the time I'm usually in one. So, I mean, I was thinking about doing something, but I was like, nah, it's too much because I was also working. So, but again, I'll be disappointed if you aren't, you know, in costume. I will do it just for you. Just for you. (laughs) Audrey, once again, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for interviewing with me and I hope to talk to you soon. You too. Thanks again. Thank you. Bye.